Good morning and welcome back to the lecture series on bioelectricity. Uh, today we will start the module on the plant bioelectricity. So, as we have discussed in the if you remember in the first lecture we talked about that we have divided the course into different modules animal bioelectricity, plant bioelectricity, insect bioelectricity and few other uh, some of the ancient molecules we will be dealing with. So, so, following that pattern, so today we are initiating the plant bioelectricity. So, if you remember we will be studying plant at three different level. So, even before I go about the plant, so whenever we talk about, so the way I have module this section is this, I will introduce you about the plants and uh, where it really fits in the ecosystem and uh, how the bioenergetics on the floor of earth is governed by plants and the overall anatomy of the plants. And from there we will move on to three different uh, aspects of plants which in which uh, involve transfer of charges or transfer of electrons and which eventually leads to two important things. One is the movement of the plants, the other one is the energy harvesting. So, coming back give, after giving this brief, brief background, I can tell you. So, plants, if we look back in the ecosystem or in the whole food chain, our the, the whole life form depends on sun as the solar energy. That is very fundamental. Okay. So, these sun solar energy are being trapped by the green leaves, by a very similar way by which a solar cell traps the solar energy and ejects an electron and generates power. Exactly by the same analogy a plant traps the solar energy, ejects that electron and these electron further helps in synthesizing very high energy rich molecules. And these energy rich molecules are further utilized by the plant for synthesizing energy storage molecules. And once the energy storage molecules are formed, the next level of life forms are the animals which cannot synthesize food directly from sunlight and from air and soil, they eat the plant. And eventually once they die, the debris mix on the plant uh, mix on the soil and the food cycle goes on. So, just to give you a graphical representation of this just to get an idea, okay, let us uh, get back. So, we are into this lecture into plant bioelectricity. And as I have mentioned, we have will divide this whole thing into different component. First of all, we will talk about the ecosystem and role of plants. in energy harvesting. And transfer. Okay. Then we will be talking about the classification of plants, classification of plants. After this, we will be talking about the mechanism of energy harvesting. Which essentially is called 
photosynthesis. Photo means light, synthesis means synthesizing energy rich molecules using light. Okay. So, then from there we will move on to the not part of photosynthesis as such, but another section of it which will be plant movement and in this section we will be talking about Mimosa Pudica or touch me not plant and Venus flytrap. Apart from it, we will be picking up another small section within this, which is disensitized. solar cells. So, this is essentially an inspiration from flowers. So, this is the overall outline what we are going to dealt with which I was trying to tell you verbally that these are the aspects what we are going to deal with. So, coming back to the ecosystem part. So, essentially in the ecosystem what is happening is that assume sun has the major source of energy so solar radiation reaching the floor of earth. solar radiation is being picked up by the land plants and the water plants. Okay. So, what is coming is in the form of H nu and within this machinery there are once the light falls on these surfaces, there is an ejection of electron out here. This electron eventually leads to the synthesis of energy rich molecules. This energy rich molecule leads to the further synthesis of different storage molecules. And as I was telling you, these plants are eventually consumed by the animals, and again, within animals, these animals are consumed by higher animals. And eventually, all these dies out these all dies out and increase the biomass of the soil and get transformed into organic matter okay. and this organic matter is eventually utilized by the plants again along with organic matter plus water plus minerals and in the presence of sunlight the whole process goes on and on and what we will be dealing essentially is in this zone where this whole
energy transduction is taking place. Which is essentially the process of photosynthesis. Okay. So, from here, if I just refer back to previous slide, what I was trying to tell you. So, this is the part what just now I discussed with you people. The overall idea of the ecosystem. This is very essential to get a global picture that uh, where we are really heading and what is the inspiration of this whole process. Now, coming back to this slide. So, this whole electron transfer, what is happening in the on the surface of the leaves. So, essentially you can consider the vegetative cover on the floor of earth, whether it is in the water, whether it is in the land, they are very similar to the solar panels. So, essentially the whole earth whatsoever a percentage of earth is covered with vegetation is essentially functioning as a mechanism of nature by which solar energy is being trapped. Okay. And this specific molecules, which has the ability to capture the sunlight and eject electron, are inspiration for uh, developing next generation of solar cells. So, what we essentially have to understand the structure of these molecules, the process which is governing the electron transport chain within nature and the process by which it synthesizes the energy rich molecule. Once we understand this process, we will draw inspiration from the current research where people are trying to emulate or mimic these kind of systems in order to develop next generation of energy harvesting devices, next generation of power sources. So, coming back to the classification where I was going. So, next what we will do, we will start with this part, the classification of the plants. This is very essential before you could understand where this all these things fits in. Okay. So, coming back to the classification of the plants. So, plants could be broadly in a very simple manner, plants could be classified into two groups. So, you could have plants which are growing in the land, you could have plants which are growing in the water. This is the broadest of all classification. Okay. Land plants and plants growing in water okay. and these land plants could be further classified into two categories, vascular plant, avascular plant. Okay. The vascular plants, avascular plant, this word means within the plants, the plants pick up water, okay. plants pick up nutrients, plants synthesize different things. So, these happens through specific channels, it is just like within our body, there are blood vessels which carries uh, blood, there are limb vessels which are carrying limb exactly the same analogy holds true for plants, where the plants have vessels which carries water and nutrients, those are called xylem vessels and they have vessels which carries energy rich synthesized energy rich molecules, which also is called the plant sap, those are carried through another series of vessels called phloem vessels and the xylem vessels I will draw it, they are separated from the phloem vessels by a series of dead tissues, which ensure the xylem vessel is pretty much waterproof on, on the whole tube through which the water moves through is kind of 
waterproofed on all the sides. Okay. So, the vascular plants are the one which has very specialized xylem and flowing vessels and avascular plants are the ones which does not have the xylem and the flowing vessels. So, essentially avascular plants by default has to be a smaller shape, a smaller size because they do not have any mechanism to distribute nutrients. So, they can only do by a diffusion process within a very small area or within a very small space as compared to a, 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 as compared to a vascular plant which has specialized machinery to transport any kind of nutrients or water or nutrient to all parts of its system. Okay. So, now coming back. So, vascular plant, avascular plants. So, vascular plants are further classified into three groups. And those three groups are called angiosperm, gymnosperm, and ferns. So, angiosperms are the ones which in which the seeds are covered with fleshy coating. covered with so these are the plants like you know the mango or apple where you see the seed is deep inside and it is covered by a complete uh, fleshy eatable matter so these falls under angiosperm then you have the gymnosperms these have naked seeds there is no covering on the seeds okay. and then you have the ferns. Ferns are though they have vascular system, but they are without seeds and yet you have avascular plants. They do not have any specialized xylem or flowing vessel. So, these have let me put it xylem and flowing vessels. So, avascular plant these includes mosses and liver woods and this is what classifies us with the different plants which are found in the land. Whereas, on the other side when we are talking about the plants growing in water, they are mostly falling under the seaweeds. Okay. So, now all these plants have one common feature which is in the previous slide when I speaking to you guys about this whole process of photosynthesis. So, they all have chlorophyll and they all synthesize food from the sunlight and this remain our central thematic for a long period of time in the world where we live. We always believe this, but certain extraordinary discoveries in the last century change the way we think. So, what I have drawn you is sun and the plants and synthesizing energy animals are consuming it all of them are dying adding up organic matter. So, this whole process depends on sunlight yet this whole mechanism is not the only way by which life has evolved. During 1970s, especially the disc 1977, some of the teams of National Geographic and few other experts in oceanography, they were exploring in the sea, pretty much deep down into the core 
or into the floor of this ocean. And they found in there are several places or at least the first discovery was made in Galapagos Island, deep inside where no sunlight ever reaches, where there are existence of high pressure, low temperature situation. There are something called hydrothermal vents. These are the fissures or these are the gap through which the from the inner core the heat is kind of ejected out onto the floor of the ocean and that is where they found in that complete dark exceptionally low temperature they found life is thriving. What I will do in this context I will send you some of the links for the videos which are available online which will help you to appreciate. And it was amazing to see how the light thrives in those uh, hydrothermal vents. Hydrothermal vents and in and around hydrothermal vents, there are a series of sulphide related molecules, iron disulphide, iron copper sulphide likewise and several. There is no sunlight. So, let us again rewrite the previous graph. So, now we are talking about a situation. So, if this is the ocean flow, ocean surface and if the sun is sitting here out here. So, most of the life form or the seaweeds what you see are growing either on the top of this and that is it up to maybe up to this maximum few feet underneath, but sunlight never reaches sunlight never reaches anything beyond it that is it maximum sunlight will reach the cell and where you will see the light. So, just let me label it for you further understanding this is the ocean surface these green ones are the seaweeds ok. And now we are talking about a situation deep inside somewhere out here several feet underneath this is where this is almost 600 to 700 or even more this is the sea floor or the ocean floor and from here comes out all the hydrates here is the formation of these hydrothermal vents out here these are the black smokers chimneys white and black smokers and I will give you this all those uh, videos link of the videos you will see. Hydrothermal vents and white and black smokers. And these are also called the chimneys okay. and this is the zone which is kind of you know very lot of sulphides, iron, magnesium and series of them. It's a very hostile environment and here you see a series of life forms growing through. So, then whether these life forms now if you compare this situation where there is no light reaching so how the electron transfer is taking place. So, there is no photosynthesis taking place in this situation, but if you compare this picture with this picture where there is a cyan of sun which is directly hitting upon the leaves and if you see this picture now there is no sun which is hitting upon the surface. So, these kind of life forms leads to 1977 changed our way we think. 
and this leads to a new form of synthesis, new form of electron transport or electron transfer that falls under another like another form which is called chemosynthesis. And this part of chemosynthesis falls under all the ancient molecule we will be dealing with especially with special reference to iron disulfide and other molecules we will be dealing with. The whole chemosynthesis where solar energy is not a essential criteria for electron transport. So, photosynthesis and chemosynthesis. So, now coming back to the classification of the plants where I was trying to classify it. So, the seaweeds. So, I am now putting another one more site classification out here within the sea very deep inside you cannot call them plants. There is another group of organism called archaeans growing very low or no oxygen, very high pressure, fairly low temperature and most importantly no sunlight deep inside the ocean floor. These life forms thrive. Okay. So, these life forms essentially what we will be dealing with the ancient molecules what I have discussed in the global scheme of things in the beginning that there are molecules which are not dependent in nature on solar energy or any form of light as such. So, coming back to the classification this is V2O V2 just to give you an overall picture that it is not always the sunlight which involves in the electron transport. Okay. So, talking about the, the inspiration what we are drawing. So, of course, the way it will go is and there is one more thing. So, if I look at the now let us dis, uh, discuss the anatomy of the plant in very brief. So, I am not going to come back to this. So, I have given you the classification of the plant. So, you go back. So, this is what we are trying to do classification of the plants. So, ecosystem and here let me add one more thing after classification of the plants we will be dealing with the uh, very brief anatomy of plants. Okay. So, ecosystem of the plant. So, we have talked about this part as of now. We have talked about the overall classification of the plant. Okay. Now, we will be talking about the brief anatomy of the plant in this class. So, coming back to the anatomy of the plants. So, the plant has like if of course, here we are only talking about the mostly the classic angiospermic plant which has seeds and everything. Okay. So, if you look at a plant structure almost like this on so okay and further go down. So, underneath you have all the root system. Okay. Now, given the nomenclature, so here you have the flowers which leads to the seeds and everything. Here you have the leaves. Here you have the main stem and here you have the root system. So, the way it works is sunlight is falling on these surfaces 
and water plus nutrients are traveling along this and all the assimilation taking place out here and the energy rich molecules are stored along the another series of vessels. So, now what we will do we will blow up the cross section <coughs> of the stem or the root. Okay. So, if you see the cross section cross section of a the cross section, cross section will look something like this. So the cross section has okay. So okay. Uh, this is not the right way. Let me just rub it off and, and, and do it again. Okay. Give me one minute, let me just finish the drawing and then I will tell you exactly. Okay. So you see there is a central canal which I have drawn in yellow. So that is the one which is carrying which what we are terming as the xylem vessels okay that is carrying the water up into the plants from the roots so this xylem vessel and the phloem vessels are all over up to the tip of the root all the way up to the tip of the shoot fine they travel all along so there are pipes which are traveling along fine. so it is something like let me show you by some simple chalk pieces which are lying here they are like this okay this is the vessel and surrounded by the phloem vessel. So, xylem vessel is in the center and surrounded by the phloem vessels. Imagine there are other chalks which are surrounding it and they are the phloem vessels. Okay. So, the central ones are the this is your xylem which is allowing the water to move all the way up water and nutrients. What you see in the flowing vessels on the other side and this side, these are the ones which are ensuring the, the plant sap or whatever the molecules flowing. So, whatever the molecules which are being synthesized by the by the plant, the energy rich molecules or, 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 the, or the storage molecules, they remain in the phloem. And between the xylem and the phloem, there is a pretty much a waterproofing molecules, which ensures none of the water is kind of in a lost. This gives a waterproofing. What you see, I am just putting the crosses on. In at the bit in between the xylem and the flowing vessels. So, this is kind of a waterproofing of the xylem vessels, because this is very essential that you know the water is not being lost from the xylem vessel otherwise you know there will be an absolute mix up and this waterproofing is done by a series of molecules called lignans 
lignans are the ones which ensures that it is not being lost. And if you see the cross section of this, if you just cut the cross section, what you will see essentially is something like this. So, in the center, you will be seeing the xylem vessel and on the peripheries you will see all the yellow, just I have reversed the colors, so do not get worried. So, so, this is the cross sectional view, here you have the xylem and here you have the flowing vessels, there are multiple flowing vessels which are traveling all along and this will come very handy while we will be talking about the plant movement okay. and, and coming back to the structure of the leaves which you have discussed as of now. So, there is something called a petiole which is here and these are the veins of the leaves which are carrying the nutrients and the water at the at different parts of the, this solar harvesting mechanism. Okay. Apart from it, what is important for you people to understand is why I have drawn the flower. So, this flower, these flowers are the inspiration for in the first slide if you go back, I mentioned about the disensitized solar cell. All these different dyes present on the flower, they all have ability to trap sunlight and eject electron. Only difference between these and the major molecule in photosynthesis which is called chlorophyll is that the other dyes have a have lower molar absorption coefficient. We will come to all these things molar absorption coefficient and that is why they do not directly take part in photosynthesis. Instead, they try to concentrate the solar energy on the leaves and help the chlorophyll molecule to move ahead and perform the function of trapping the sunlight and ejects the electron. But those molecules are inspiration for last almost uh, three decades since 1980s it has all started with the discovery or with the finding by Gretzel. So, we will be talking about the Gretzel cells out here which are direct inspiration from nature from the structures of the flowers all the dyes of the flowers which are derived from here are used for and of course, there are several dyes which are synthesized after getting inspiration from the floral dyes. So, overall in this module we will be talking in this module we will be talking about. So, after giving you this brief outline of the anatomy classification. So, back to my second slide where I was. So, now I have talked about the anatomy. So, the ecosystem I have done, I will give you a brief idea. We have talked about the classification of the plants, we have talked about the brief anatomy of the plant and of course, I told you why from where the inspiration for disensitized solar cells are. So, now what we will do after this, so with this brief introduction about the plant systems and how they are transferring electrons and everything, I will move on to the real process where the plants are harvesting the sunlight and ejecting electrons and that will fall under photosynthesis. So, I will not come back to all these things any further. So, now on I will be talking about in the next class what I will be starting is I will be talking about the overall photosynthetic machinery, the chlorophyll molecule, the different types and they are uh, spectral properties. Then we will be talking about uh, the electron transport chain and likewise. Okay. So, I will close in here 
and in the next class we will continue with this, but then we will be directly talking about the energy harvesting through photosynthesis, photosystem 1, photosystem 2, then C3, C4 plants and the inspiration drawn out of this photosynthesis in terms of uh, water splitting complex and chlorophyll for developing next generation of energy harvesting devices. And from there we will move on to the plant movements where even could be considered as a rudimentary nervous system of the plant. And the tail piece of this section will move on to the disensitized solar cells. Thanks a lot.